Hey Leon, um, we should talk about labs. You okay with that? <laughs> I'm always okay talking about labs. What do you mean? Okay, okay. So uh, one one of the questions or the concerns I heard quite frequently is um, having a lab, and even if you have a lab as a SolarWinds customer, you don't have access to gear. You know, what, what do you mean? You, people don't have a spare, you know, Nexus switch or you know, seventy two hundred or something just lying around. No, it's it's like have rabbit no nexus, right? But, but um, look, if if you if you let's go a few steps back. So basically, there's two reasons I think for having a lab, and one would be um, like a temporary lab. You want to try something, and before you go production, you should test. You should test before you go into production, right? Sure. Um, so that would be a temporary lab. Um, right. Maybe I don't know. Apply a change to the device or to 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 the platform, right? And the other and more involving is probably you have your production system, which might be a huge Orion deployment, um, uh -huh. and, a, and, a, and a smaller, smaller but temporary lab where you can really test things all the time. That is probably interesting if you um, if your organization has to be compliant to whatever standard, right? So you can test right. stuff small before you go live, or if you but want to test still, out automation or alerts or things like that. Now, yeah. what's interesting about this is, is that this is where GNS3 comes in really handy. Now, GNS3 is a, a free tool that is actually under the SolarWinds umbrella, and it lets you create virtual networks. So that problem that you, you said about not having spare gear lying around, you can create a virtual network and then monitor it with your Orion installation. Now, I wrote about this like five years ago. Um, when the software was a, a lot less sophisticated than it is today, where you would put everything on your laptop. It would all be right there. But with cloud, private cloud or public cloud, I think it's time to update it. So I did that. I updated the ebook. It's available now. It's going to give the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do everything that we're showing. And it actually is the basis for this session. So I think that's a really good way to solve the problem that, Sasha, you're talking about. Um, but I think we need to talk about cost for a quick second, because if we're talking about cloud, then uh, even if you have budget set aside for it, there is going to be a cost. So I want to take a look at um, what I set up for this session here. So here is the actual Azure cloud costs uh, for my Orion installation and also for the GNS3 environment. And you can see that it's really not a lot. I'm spending a little bit over $6 on storage, $2 on my virtual machines, almost nothing on the network. The real cost was the SQL database that goes along with Orion, and it's still not much. So it can be a really economical way to run a lab, um, and you get the flexibility of being able to put lots of things in and take things out. Um, it's certainly cheaper than buying real gear. And the other thing that's really useful about this is that the installation, which is another thing that I hear about from people when they're complaining about the lab, is that the, the effort to install Orion or to create the lab or whatever it is, is it is expensive in terms of time. Whereas if you go ahead and, and install Orion from Amazon Marketplace or from the Azure store, it's just click, 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 and there it is. It's all pre-configured for you. That is particularly important for the guys with the temporary labs, right? You, yeah. you just need to test something right now. It's click, click. Okay, it's a bit more, but not that many clicks. Um, and it runs, right? That's it. Uh, and one of the other things is to keep costs low, you can just shut everything down when you're done. Yeah, yeah. but there's one, one thing. Um, if you if you shut the instance down and you monitor stuff in Orion, you need to unmanage the devices. Okay, I mean if you if you enjoy receiving lots of emails because device down, interface down, whatever down, fine. But um, shut it down. There's there's a few things you you should consider. So for example, um, you can automatically shut down or sorry unmanage the devices in the Orion platform, just like a scheduling mm -hmm. feature. So you can automate it. Um, you could use PowerShell, so you can can yeah. use our API and PowerShell to unmanage the device. And I'm pretty sure you can use PowerShell even to um, start uh, start and shut down the GNS instance in the cloud. Yeah, exactly. So um, there are a lot of PowerShell scripts out there for automating startup and shutdown in AWS or Azure. And like you said, the Orion SDK is incredibly flexible to start or stop services or monitoring specific nodes um, as well. So you can make that one single thing and you can even do it on a time schedule. Okay, so let's have a look at what exactly is available in the clouds. So basically you just go as an hour example to the Azure marketplace and you can just start a new search. 
type solar winds, and you will see, and there's pretty much all Orion models available. So we have it on the screen right now, and we can scroll down a tiny bit, and you see all the models, including DPA is there. Um, everything is available, and you can build your own system, basically. But Leon, we are not showing all of the models today, right? There's just a few. No, no, no. I, I kept it relatively small because we don't have six hours to go over all this. So we're just going to do NPM, NCM, and NetFlow, and we're going to show those today. I also want to point out that the Orion installer that you're used to on the Earth, not in the cloud, is the same one that's here. So if you install just um, you know, let's say SAM or NPM, that doesn't mean you stop there. You can rerun the installer and add more modules after if you want to test additional things out. So don't feel like you have to pick the perfect right choice right here and you're locked in. You can always extend it in your cloud-based installation of Orion as much as you could um, otherwise. But yeah, we're only showing those three modules for right now. So let's dig into how you build this kind of lab. Um, First of all, I want to point out that GNS3 is free. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can download it from gns3.com. It's really useful if you need to pass, say, Cisco certifications. And there's two components to it. There's a graphical interface, and there's also the server. And you can put them all on the same machine, or you can put them separately. Here, what you're looking at is that I have it separately. I have a Windows machine running the graphical interface. And then in the PuTTY window, I have an instance of Ubuntu running the GNS3 server piece. So that's what I have these two pieces going on. And then in another machine, I have um, Orion running. And again, Windows Server, you can see I've got the services running, um, you know, and then the database. Uh, if you want to have it, you know, if this is a very short term thing, you can put the database local. Uh, but of course, uh, Sasha, we don't really like to do that, right? No, I was I was just about interrupting you. So um, if it's super tiny short test, it's fine. Same box, SQL Express. But no, no, no. <laughs> <Put it separate. laughs> the database elsewhere. It's it's just it's much better. It's much better. Exactly. Okay. And here, like I said, is the GNS three environment. Um, now the other thing is that to make this work uh, in the cloud, you're going to need to open up. Um, some ports on the Unix or the Linux box itself. So you're going to have to get into IP tables and you're going to have to put in some folding. Enough of the penguins. Just, just go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. That might be a little bit more technical. Too many detailed. penguins. Too many penguins. Okay, fine. Um, there are some technical details, but it is in the ebook. So please don't worry. There's some extra steps that you need to do, but we've out outlined them perfectly in the book. You can follow them step by step. Okay, so um, let's take a look at what it looks like when it all goes together. So here you can see my Orion installation, and I'm monitoring those same three routers, R1, R2, and R3, very creatively named, that are running in the GNS3 environment. Um, and it's all being monitored in Orion as if it was real gear. So we can now have fun and destroy things? Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what I wanted to show. So um, here we've got these devices and they're up. But what happens if I shut them down? Now, this is something you can't do on the online demo. And you shouldn't do in production. Exactly. And that's the beauty of GNS3, because these devices don't actually exist and they're not actually doing something. So if I want to shut down router one, I can go into GNS3 and just say stop and it's down. What's interesting is that the other two are showing warning because the serial interfaces, the ones that connect to that R1 router are no longer available. And so it perceives a problem there. But of course, I can go back to GNS3 again and I can bring that router back up. And there we go. Everything's back up and running again. So where do we start? I mean, um, we probably don't start out of nothing in the cloud. We start locally, right? Right. Okay. And that's one of the things that I get asked about when I talk about this is that, you know, cloud compute is expensive, even if it's not horrifically expensive, but you can do this local. You can install a copy of GNS3 locally on your laptop, and then you can build your project, your environment locally, and then just copy that GNS3 file up to your cloud-based instance of GNS3. And as long as you have all of the router images, um, you have all the images of the iOS there, which I only am using one for this, as long as that's up there too, it's all going to run exactly the same way that you have it built down on Earth. So that's another way to keep your costs low. Um, I do want to point out that the more devices and the larger your environment, the more memory the GNS3 server is going to need. So that's going to have an impact on your costs as well. But the 
really cool part about cloud is that that's it kind of fluid, right? It's, it's a little bit um, elastic. So that and if there's, you need there's more... the resources, right? It's it's um, if you would run GNS locally, it's probably a bit cheaper because you don't have the cloud cost, but it's eating resources a lot. Yeah, of resources. Yeah. yeah, I've heard from more than one person who was studying for an exam or whatever who realizes that they needed to buy a new laptop just because GNS three was chewing up so many resources um, on their machine that they couldn't keep doing it, or they needed a separate server, or whatever. So there's your there's your trade off. So let's take a look at a few other use cases. I think the first one I want to do, it's it's a weird one, but it shows how flexible this GNS3 environment is, is that you can actually use universal device pullers on it. For example, um, the supply state. I'm just going to do a quick test here on all the machines and hit test, and it's going to collect the OID. Now, I do have to say that not every object ID is supported. Um, there's not going to be any fans, so the fans aren't going to work, even though theoretically in a real box they would. But you still can use this to test out universal device pullers before you apply them. And another use case is that you can do config changes. You can see here that we've been collecting the configs, OK, fine, just for a day because it's a demo. Um, and again, we want to keep our costs down, but um, you can use it to test backing up configurations. You can use it to test um, making configuration changes, pushing out configuration changes, you know, all of that stuff. Also, that's another use case. Um, Sasha, what do you got? What kinds of ideas do you have? Well, I would probably use such a lab to go for the really crazy stuff, which you would never do in production, like compliance with auto remediation. What about that, right? So what we see here is a rule which I defined earlier, and um, we would just go to manage policy reports. Um, Leon, can you just click? You got the mouse there, perfect. And manage rules. Manage rules. And search for telnet. Okay. I love it when I just say something and Leon makes it happen. That's perfect. <laughs> so there's, there's the rule telnet. Oh no, let's have a quick look at it, so like edit. There we go. What we what we see here is basically a very simplified um, rule because we are in a lab. So basically, transport in, transport input telnet SSH. If this is found, we are not happy. Um, we can use it the way it is. If we would like it to be a little bit more complicated, we can use regex. But regex and me are kind of at war, so I leave it out here. And if we look at the bottom, there's now an auto remediation, and that is where things get tricky. So if we find the condition, the first condition with Telnet, we would automatically remove Telnet again. So we just go to the VTI, VTI line and uh, issue the SSH only command. And basically, um, if, if we now would go to the router, we're not doing this right now, but if we would change the configuration, the next time we pick it up, it would be automatically fixed. And you can be very, very creative with your remediation rules here. Yeah. Right. And it, and again, just to emphasize, the idea here is that one of the reasons why I hear a lot of IT folks and network engineers not try out um, automation and automated remediation is because they're afraid of something going wrong. They're afraid yeah. of what might happen in production. Here's a chance to work in your GNS3 environment, which is fake and doesn't actually exist, and try a remediation rule, see what the impact is across the entire environment, poke at it, shove it, so it, see if it falls over. And once you're really comfortable with it, that's when you can move it into production. All right, what else right. could we do? Uh, there's also NetFlow. NetFlow is a good example. Um, we can just try and generate some flows. Obviously, if we look at the GNS3 instance, we need something that's actually generating flows, right? Not just the, the <laughs> router sitting there. Um, right. So, so we we would just um, set it up in the router using the console, and in, we we use Cisco as an example. Here, it's like five lines of configuration or so, and we should see it here on the screen, and we should also see it's showing up as a flow source somewhere there. Um, so, what else? What else could we do? I think at this point, it's pretty clear that, that GNS3 is giving you a real network environment to play around with. So, for example, if you want to test out firmware upgrades, you can do your firmware upgrades and push them to your GNS3 environment, make sure that you haven't messed anything up, and see how that works. Um, we talked about testing configuration scripts. You can do what's called leaf and branch, uh, where you're pushing out the configuration to your furthest devices, and then the next ring and the next ring so that you don't cut yourself off from that farthest branch by accident. You can 
also install um, server-based monitoring like SAM, for example, and GNS3 will let you create virtual PCs inside the GNS3 environment that's generating traffic, running an application, and you can practice monitoring it in that environment, again, with the safety net of not actually breaking anything that's in production. So those are some additional use cases that you may want to explore. We, we have an idea. I have an idea. So yeah. we could actually run, it, it is possible to run an Orion server in the GNS instance. The performance is not so great, but it is possible. <laughs> and that, yes. that, opens, that opens like a can of worms. Okay, so you could start playing with HA, for example. So with an, with an yeah. um, Orion HA deployment, totally inside the box. Great idea. Right. And, and that's the kind of thing where that 30 day unlimited license for a demo probably comes in handy because you can, you know, keep on installing it. You can keep on trying it until you get it right. But also 30 days of really intense work is usually what you need to shake any of the bugs out before you try it at your next level of implementation. We have seen GNS, we have seen Orion, but what I'm missing is the, the piece that gets it all together. Let's have a look at Azure. Right. So uh, on the on the back end, on the Azure portal, um, it's pretty straightforward. I've got the um, Orion VM, the, uh, the GNS3 virtual machine, the server and the GUI are separate uh, devices or separate instances. And then there's a bunch of associated um, items like storage and the network card. You know, in cloud, everything gets broken out as a separate element, I guess, is the best way to put it, but it's all right there. And um, as we showed earlier, installing it is just a matter of going into the marketplace and saying, click, yes, one of those, one of those, one of those. And there you have it. But uh, we could make it hybrid too, right? Yeah, you could absolutely have some parts of this in the cloud and then monitor some stuff that's on-prem or in another instance. You'd have to build VPN tunnels and things like that, but it's definitely doable. Well, hopefully that's enough to get everyone excited about trying this out. If not, it's too bad that we are running out of time. <laughs> right? Um, and uh, if you're interested, but you really aren't sure where to start, I want to remind you that there's an ebook that walks you step by step through creating this. Um, and of course, I'll be blogging about this as well. And we are looking forward to your question. Well, at least Leon does. Um, but anyway, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much.